Good morning, beloveds. <clears throat> okay, it's been an exciting morning already. <laughs> Not really. I literally didn't leave my house last night, <laughs> or yesterday. Didn't go to the park, didn't talk to the squirrels. I stayed home, and we cooked breakfast, and we cooked, well, we cooked brunch and dinner, <laughs> and um, we watched Disney+. Plus. We watched Loki, and... It was an amazing show, and I'm really glad that I watched it, and I can't wait to watch it again. Um, but that's what it is, and so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I rested. I rested. I, According to my Fitbit, I fell asleep Wednesday night on the couch at 10, and sometime in there I went to bed, and then I woke up, and then I got out of bed at 10.30 the next morning. <laughs> So, and then apparently I was so still on the couch during the first couple of, uh, like, I guess the first episode of, uh, Loki that, um, my Fitbit thinks I took a nap. <laughs> so it's like, you slept for 12 hours. No, I didn't sleep for 12 hours yesterday, but it was pretty funny. So I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving, um, and that you got some rest like I did. <clears throat> it is November 26th. Our title is Life Sings Through Me in Radiant Ecstasy. And our quote is, The footsteps of those who dwell with the God of light are set free. And that is from the Book of the Dead. Now and always, I recognize that I live, move, and have my being in God. I am part of universal mind. I am one with universal substance. All the qualities and all the wealth of good and desirable things that exist in universal mind are mine now. I perceive, accept, and experience them. I know that all the beauty of form around me is the garment of God. I know that the presence which manifests in my heart and mind is God expressing itself within me. As I feel this presence more and more, I hear the song of joy deep within. Always, when I am still, I hear the song of life pouring through my consciousness. I have only to listen, for it is always there. The, the Spirit and I are one. This I know to be the truth of my being. I open my mind and my heart to the inflow of the Divine Spirit and know that the presence of God flows through my being with perfect action and in perfect unity with good. With this knowledge, this assurance that the loving presence is always here, closer to me than breathing, nearer than hands and feet, I have nothing to fear. I feel this loving protection around me, and I know that it is not only a song of joy, but a song of love and protection. I tune out all dull, negative ideas and tune in with the sunshine of life, with brightness, with laughter, with the joyous presence that is life itself. I now lay aside all anxiety, all striving, and let the law bring my good to me. I joyfully anticipate greater abundance, more success, more joy. Joy wells up within my heart, and life sings through me in radiant ecstasy. <clears throat> the one line that jumped out at me right there is the garment of God. Because that truly is everything in form. Everything in form, including me and you, um, and definitely all of nature, is literally the garment of God. Because everything is made out of the same substance. It's made out of that divine substance. We are all the garment of God. Um, and each living thing carries that spark within them. Carries that universal mind within them. Meaning that we are capable of so much more than we think we are. Uh, especially in terms of love and good and joy and happiness. Um... Because we, the material form that we put on, it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle. It is a vehicle for us to go out and do and to express and to have experiences. And I think that's one of the things that I'm learning is, is that the older I get, the experience is what is important. Not the stuff. Not the stuff. Um, 
so the experience of being with people, of loving, of being by myself, of, you know, thinking and reading and listening to music and, and watching movies, I, I, I definitely enjoy that. Um, all of that is what makes life good and abundant and rich. It's, it's, it's not the stuff. Now, everybody needs stuff. So stuff is not bad. Uh, and I don't ever want you to think that I think stuff is bad. <laughs> I'm definitely not an aesthetic. If you look around my, just in the little background, because you can see the stuff dragging over my, over my shoulder and the, the wolves above my head, stuff is not bad. But what I'm finding is that it's, it's the being together and the experiences and the camaraderie and the interaction. That's where the richness is. That's where the depth is. That's where the spirit is. Um, and that's where the joy is. Uh, I have a mundane job. I like to call it my mortgage paying job because, you know, stuff is important. But it's not, it's not to the exclusion of, you know? Uh, and I think that I've just reached that age. I, and, and to be fair, I've reached that level of comfort. <laughs> um, I don't ever, I, I never had the desire to keep up with the Joneses because I, for the most part, I thought the Joneses were out of their mind. Um, which I'm sure that the Joneses look at me and think I'm out of my mind. So that's okay. Uh, and I am, you know, because I like to, I like to live in the universal mind. I like to live in the universal mind. Uh, I like to live in the universal heart. Um, and so uh, on Maslow's ladder, you know, my basic needs are met, so I can turn to the spiritual. Um, but because my basic needs are met, and because I can turn to the spiritual, it's important to me to make sure that other people's basic needs are met as well. So, you know, it, it it's 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 that's that's what uh, the responsibility is for those of us who can turn to the spiritual is to make sure that our siblings. <laughs> Our, 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 our fellow godlings are that their needs are being met because once their needs are being met then they can turn to their wants and what we want is a good rich spiritual life I believe that that's what everybody wants um, in the long run in the long run sometimes we get a little caught up so that's what I'm that's what I'm at life sings it through me in radiant ecstasy all right, the footsteps of those who dwell with the God of light are set free. And it says, it just says the Book of the Dead. And I have no idea which Book of the Dead, because if you do some reading, several cultures, probably a lot of cultures, have the Book of the Dead. The most famous one is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, so that might be it. But you know what? There are others. Take a look around. Because um, I think the... I, I think I own at least three from three different cultures. Uh, now and always, I recognize that I am a, that I live, move, and have my being in God. It's one of the ways. It's some variation of that that most science of mind ministers start their treatment with. It's that recognition of there's one power, and we are part of that power. I am part of the universal mind. I'm not all of the universal mind. I'm just a small, tiny, infinitesimal part of it. But I have access to all of it. As I choose. As I am willing. As I'm willing to accept. I am one with universal substance. We're all made of the same stuff. I mean, literally, physics tells us that. We're all made of the same atoms and electrons and neutrons and quarks. <laughs> Photons. All the qualities and all the wealth of good and desirable things that exist in universal mind are mine now. I have access to all of that good, to all of that richness, to all of that wisdom, to all of that experience, as I'm willing to accept it. I perceive, accept, and experience them. That's a that's a claim, that's a statement. This is what I this is what this is how I choose to live my life. I know that the present which the 
the presence which manifests in my heart and mind is God express, expressing itself through me. That is spirit expressing through me. I am spirit expressing. Or as I like to say, I'm God in action. I'm God in action. We talk about treatment and people want to save treatment for the big things. And I'm like, no, don't save treatment for the big things. Treat about the little things. Because God doesn't save God's self for the big things. Because God is everything from the big things to the little things. As I feel this presence more and more, I hear the song of joy deep within. Always, when I am still, I hear the song of life pouring through my consciousness. That is the point of spiritual practice. To hear that song. And to sing that song. I have only to listen, for it is always there. Spirit and I are one. This I know to be the truth of my being. I open my mind and my heart to the inflow of divine spirit and know that the presence of God flows through my being with perfect action and in perfect unity with good. I mean, you want a statement of power? There it is. And it is the power of love, and it is the power of good, and it is the power of joy, and it's the power of happiness, and the power of creativity. To know who we are. To know who we are. With this knowledge, this assurance, that the loving presence is always here, and these are quotes, uh, closer to me than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. And I, that could be a quote from the Bible, but Rumi has a very similar quote too. So he could be quoting poetry right there. Um, which there's a lot of poetry in the Bible. So, you know, hey. I have nothing to fear. Because the essential part of me, that spark that is me, can never be harmed. It can never be put out. This mortal form... This material form, this vehicle that I'm running around in, it's not eternal. But the spark of me that animates it is. And that is why I have nothing to fear. So whatever happens to this form doesn't touch the essence of me. Except for the love. Except for the love. I feel this loving protection around me, and I know that it is not only a song of joy, but a song of love and protection. Because I know that the spark of me, the essence of me, is being held. And it's being held gently, and it's being held softly, but it's being held firmly. And it's being held by something that will never falter. I tune out all the dull and negative ideas and tune in with the sunshine of life, with the brightness, with the laughter, with the joyous presence that is life itself. I now lay aside all anxiety, all striving, and let the law bring my good to me. I can set aside the striving because when I'm willing and ask for, because that is what asking does, Asking sets signals to the spirit that I am ready and willing to accept. Then the law will bring it to me. And the law will guide me to it. Because I will be listening. <laughs> I will be listening. I joyfully anticipate greater abundance, more success, and more joy. And there's that gratitude. There's that gratitude. The more grateful we are, the more we the more we have. Because we see the little things, and the little things are what build into the big things. Joy wells up within my heart, and life sings through me in radiant ec ecstasy. You know those people. You know those people who life sings through in that radiant ecstasy because they're a joy to be around. They're a pleasure to be around. You want to be around them. You want to be around them. All right, um, so the mission today, should we choose to accept it? Ah, mm. 
There's so many. All right, I'm going to choose this one. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to open our hearts and our minds to the inflow of the divine spirit and to recognize the presence of God that flows through us. To feel it, to hear it, to see it, to smell it, to taste it. Engage all your senses and recognize the God around you. To recognize the God around you. All right, beloveds. That's the mission. It's the mission every day. We just use different words. But every day it's about recognizing who we are. And who we are, our beloved children of God, in whom God is well pleased, always. And it is a state of grace. It is a state of grace that does not have to be earned. It is a state of grace that it is given. And that's what grace means. Granted. All right, beloveds. I am going to move into the process of my day because it's Black Friday and we are having Black Friday sales. So it should be interesting. Um... And y'all be safe out there and do what you need to do, you know, to take care of yourself. But please, uh, as I always do, remind you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever it looks like. For me, yesterday was not leaving my house. It was not getting out of bed until 1030. It was eating pancakes. <laughs> it was cooking dinner. In such a way that I have dinner tonight. So I don't have to worry about it. Because, you know, Tom's not going to be home tonight. He's out at the Ren, the Ren Fair helping out in the booth. So, you know, that's my kind, compassionate, loving. I planned ahead. <laughs> um, so that I don't have to worry about it. And I got up with him and, you know, helped him get out at, at a god-awful hour this morning. So, you know. When I do loving, kind, compassionate things for myself, then I can do loving, kind, compassionate things for other people. And that's why I suggest it every day. That's why I want it to be your first response. That's why I want you to create that habit, that bank, as I like to call it, a default setting. So that no matter what happens, your first response will be love. Your first response will be kindness. Your first response will be compassion, especially with yourself especially with yourself. All right. I also encourage you to engage your mind and your body. It was really cold out there. So I was like, to heck with this. I'm not getting on the bike. I did go for a walk. Um, and it was good. And when the wind kicked in, oh, and I saw a hawk. <laughs> uh, there is a hawk that lives in our neighborhood. And uh, I saw the hawk today. Um, and he, he, she, it flew by. And I was so stunned that, yeah, I didn't get the camera. I even had the camera out because I was going to stop and take a picture of a tree and didn't catch it. But, you know, so engage your mind and your body. Go connect with nature. You know, I was just walking in the neighborhood. I didn't even go to the park. Um, but go connect with nature. Get some sun early in the morning, five, ten minutes, first thing in the morning. It really can do wonders for resetting your hormones. Um, and help you have more energy during the day and sleep better at night. And then drink plenty of water. Drink plenty of water. It's very important. Hydrate. Um, whatever else you do. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you you do live in heaven right here, right now. Always. Always. Oh, it's all around you. All right. So sing that radiant song of joy. Hear it and sing it. And sing it to the people that have forgotten it. <sighs> All right, beloveds. Have a great day. An amazing day. A fantastic day. A stupendous day. An enchanting day. A good day. And if that's too much pressure, simply have a day. But whatever else happens, know that you're loved. All right, beloveds. Um... There may or may not be a book study today. I'm not sure. I know they're getting close to finishing high mysticism, uh, but I don't know if they were taking the day off. So uh, email info at creativelife.org if you want to know. And catch us up on all the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center um, on YouTube and Facebook and Creative Life Spark on TikTok and Instagram. And I'm the Running Rev on Running Rev Ryan, the Running Rev Ryan on three of the four. Not on TikTok. Not sure. <laughs> yeah. 
I know eventually I'll get there, but I'm not ready yet. So, all right, beloveds. Know that you're loved, and I will see you tomorrow night. Because tomorrow is Saturday, and I get to go to the Renaissance Festival in the morning. So, I will see you tomorrow night. All right, beloveds. Take care.